Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Christian Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, here in wonderful Swansea, Massachusetts. You are welcome, particularly in this congregation, whether you are here sitting in the sanctuary or at home watching on cable or online. It is indeed good to be together to celebrate all the blessings that God has given us and to be a community of faith that cares and shares with one another. So I just want to say it is really good to see you after missing you for a couple weeks between a blizzard and the flu. My family is all healthy, so thank you all for your prayers, your cards, your concerns. I really appreciate it. You will notice I am limping a little bit today, but that's just because of a sledding accident. A friend asked me why I'm sledding at my age, and I said it's because I have a 12-year-old, so of course I'm sledding. <laughs> but it's all fine. It is all fine. It is a beautiful day and indeed great to be together. So I do have a few more announcements for you, but I especially have others who are going to be making announcements. So I just want to remind you of the spaghetti supper to go that is coming up. There's a form right here in your bulletin. You can also talk to some of our spaghetti supper folks, especially Karen, who is right there raising, waving her hand. So if you like spaghetti and who doesn't like spaghetti, talk to her and all the proceeds benefit our budget, which is fantastic. So you don't have to cook and you benefit the church. A win-win. All right, uh, I'm now gonna call up. We have three folks who need to make announcements today. So I have Charlene and I have Sarah and I have John. Good morning. Good morning. I need to grow up. Um, so this morning, right after um, after church, please stay in your seat. We have our annual meeting. Um, we're organized. It won't take all that long. Um, we need you to be here for your voice, for discussion, and for voting. So um, I look forward to seeing you stay, and we'll do our annual meeting um, right after service. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not going to hold this up. I just want to thank you all for your kindness and your thoughtfulness. It's really so hard right now, but I got such beautiful phone calls, text messages, and beautiful cards. I'm so happy to be part of this congregation. Me and Rose, we were really comfortable here. Truly thank you all for your thoughtfulness and your caring and your understanding. Love you all. Thank you all. I heard a rumor that I might get elected to a board called In-House Fellowship Care. I've got no clue what that means, <laughs> but I thought I better practice. So as you come into church today, you saw a table with a lot of these little Valentine envelopes. If you would take one, two, three, four, five of those and send a Valentine to that person, the name and the address is, in, is on this little paper inside. So the directions are to take this envelope and then take a chocolate and then next Sunday, when you come, you will go to that person and say, a real happy Valentine's. So that's called spreading the love. And I think that's my job. <laughs> well, yes it is. That's exactly your job. <laughs> yes, in reach, a wonderful way of doing fellowship and spreading the love in our congregation. Any more announcements in our midst? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you how we started the bulletin and in the newsletter. I just wanted to remind everyone um, that Keith has his show next week. It's on Friday and Saturday, Friday at 7. Oh, this is kind of not Friday at 7 and Saturday at 2, you're all welcome. $5 per person, tickets are at the door, the Adams family. Oh, 
Keith, what's your what's your role in the play? Gomez. Gomez in the Adams family. Isn't that one of the leading roles? Yes, yes it is. All the information is right here. So yes, absolutely. Go see Keith as Gomez. It will be awesome. So directions, information, just carry your bulletin home with you and put it on the fridge. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Any other announcements this morning? All right. So let us gather together and worship before, because God is good all the time, all the time, all the time. All right. Let's begin with passing the peace with one another in our COVID way of peace. Be with you. And also with you. May the peace of God rest with us and within us this day and always. So let us rise for our call to worship printed in this morning's bulletin. Celebrate God's grace. How comforting it is to know God always accompanies us. Approach God in awe. How amazing it is to consider that God has created each of us and each star in the heavens. Praise the living God. How good it is to come together, lift our voices, sing and praise the Lord. Let us continue in worship with our first hymn called as Partners in Christ's Service. It is on page six.
and children and youth, anyone feeling young at heart, to please come forward. Good morning. So I want to ask you, has anyone here ever been to the Bible Project Center? Yeah, maybe not. A, maybe not like for government. Like you probably haven't voted for president yet or something like that. But maybe you voted for something at school. Yeah, you voted for something at school. You voted for class president. All right. Was it you? No. <laughs> yeah, voted for ice cream parties. I would have voted for president, but I was late that day. Oh, okay. Missed out on your opportunity to vote. So, why am I talking about voting? Voting is not in the Bible really so much, but it is part of our tradition. See all those people out there? After today's worship service, we're going to be voting. We have our annual meeting, and anyone is a member gets a vote. One vote. One person, one vote. And everybody is equal with their vote. Do you know who doesn't get to vote? Me! I don't get to vote! <laughs> No, the pastor of a church doesn't get to vote. They get voice, they can speak, I can say lots of stuff, but they don't get to vote. I don't know, they don't want us to be biased, but they want us to work in a partnership, a pastor and a congregation together. But ultimately, the power in a United Church of Christ, congregational church, is held by the people. All of those people. And I know some of you are in the confirmation class, and they have the confirmation class. You can choose to be a member, and then you would get a vote. So yeah, voting is sort of how we build our church together. We come together around covenant, which means a promise to love God and love each other. And then we vote on our budget, or we vote on how we're going to organize ourselves, or all those things based on that love. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to put our love into action and vote. Question. Yes? Do they get to vote as soon as they're confirmed? They get to vote as soon as they are confirmed if they choose to be a member. Yes. So confirmation is the doorway. So you're considered an adult in the eyes of the church at that point. Now we're not going to let you go out and like drive maybe at that point if you're not a baby. <laughs> but yes, you do. That's an incredible thing that you become a member of the church after confirmation. You do so too. So yes. And you know, even if you can't go today, you can go, you know, right up to your parents and say, I think such and such and such and so. And then you hear a voice too. In fact, actually, even in the meeting, even if you can't vote, you can say something. But everybody gets a chance to say something because we're a worshiping community. And that means you're just as valuable and important as anyone else. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this church and we thank you for part of this tradition that puts the power of discerning you and your path for this church in the hands of all the people. And I thank you for all here, both older, those younger, all who gather here in your name. Let us walk forward together. Amen. All right, now you can go down with Evan and vote on what I want to talk about at church school. Yeah. <laughs> Today's first lesson is from the Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. 
Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Shear tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. Here ends the reading. the way God has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept God's commands and made myself at home in God's love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I am no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from God. You didn't choose me, remember? I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask God in relation to me, God gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. Here ends the reading. Will you pray with me? Oh Jesus, we ask you to be with us as we walk down the road with you, as you have called us your friends and called us forth. Amen. So today's sermon is a little bit like a State of the Union the state of the state, but the state of the church, reflecting on what we've done together and where we're headed next. So of course I need to start with a joke. So a doctor, an engineer, and a consultant were arguing about what was the oldest profession in the world. The doctor remarked, well, in the Bible, it says that God created Eve from a rib taken out of Adam. This clearly required surgery, and so I can rightly claim that mine is the oldest profession in the world. No, 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 said the engineer. But even earlier in the book of Genesis, it states that God created order of the heavens and the earth from out of chaos. This was first and certainly the most spectacular application of civil engineering. Therefore, you are wrong. Mine is the oldest profession. 
At which point the consultant leaned back in her chair and smiled and said confidently, ah, but who do you think created chaos? I use this joke in part because I think it speaks to our time together and our year together as a church as we reflect on this annual meeting Sunday. Uh, whenever you call an intentional interim, their job is in part to bring chaos, chaos bearer. Um, and that has been true here as well because that is my role, <clears throat> to ask you about what you do and why you do it and how it serves or doesn't serve the ministry that's done in this place, the ministry that Jesus calls you all into. And looking at all that can feel pretty chaotic at times, but thankfully chaos is not where the process ends, it's just the messy middle. Intentional interims come to a congregation with five tasks to complete, and it's not a linear process, but something that evolves over our time together. One task is coming to terms with history. What happened in the past here at this church? What leftovers do you have from this time? Here's one quick question. So, how many of you have been here for more than 11 years? Yeah, and how many people have been here 11 years or fewer? Ah, so you see the history bearers sitting over on that side who know part of the history and the life of this church before most of you came here. That's important because the past informs the present. And in putting together our church profile, something the search team is polishing right now, and you all will be able to see soon, we looked at the past. What was fruitful about past ministers at this church? What was challenging? We looked at why this church actually split about 12 years ago with the abrupt departure of its pastor and folks he took with them and the heartache that created. And what came out of that? Well, we learned that the lay folks of this church are really, really strong and that they love this church and that they can carry the congregation through almost anything, including putting it back together after a challenging time of conflict. As in Romans, where Paul says, be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant, don't quit in hard times, pray all the harder. Well, they prayed pretty well because here we are all together. <clears throat> this proved true earlier in this past year as we wrestled with conflict in our congregation right now and leaned on those covenantal promises to love one another, to respect one another, to hold one another accountable in love and to stay true to the way we wanna to live together in faith. It was hard work, it is hard work. And it was pretty chaotic for a while. Our history also included an unfinished safe church policy, which was amazingly put together and passed through the hard work of the CYM committee with input from e-council. And that is now a strength that we stand on. Now the second interim task is discovering a new identity. Who are we now? How do we live into ministry that God's calling us to? And as I've talked with you about, we live in a new age as the church in general. Church is not the most important or even seen as relevant to most people in US society right now. That's not our fault. That's not anyone's fault. It's a monumental seismic shift in society. And we won't be returning to those good old days of church past. But that doesn't mean God's call isn't just as strong or that we aren't called to serve just as much. It just means we think about it in a new way. When we learn that one of the most needful groups here in Swansea is our elder population, how does that change how we do outreach or invite people into our congregation? When we learn that the emergency service personnel who serve Swansea, fire, police, EMTs, their greatest concern right now is the mental health crisis in our community. How does that shape how we might reach out to the vulnerable? How we might destigmatize mental health struggles and mental health care? What outreach or care or compassion might be birthed out of that? Paul says to laugh with your happy friends when they're happy and share tears when they're down and to make friends with nobodies. How might this church make friends with the nobodies in our community? And you know, even more challenging this year, how do we worship and serve a world when we're in the midst of COVID? 
new ways of worship, of being together, of using technology, of keeping in touch with those who are at home, so many new things the pandemic has brought to our door. And you all have done it. We've all done it. We're still here. We're still worshiping in faith. You are still serving your neighbors. You're still looking for God's guidance. You know, there's one political leader that I actually really do admire in the midst of this COVID crisis, and she's the Prime Minister of New Zealand. Her name is Yacinda Ardern. And as COVID was coming, and she was having to force a lockdown in New Zealand, she's hosted a Facebook Live event, inviting the entire country to it. And she apologized for her casual dress as she explained that she had just put her child to bed, but she wanted to check in with everyone else in the country to see how they were doing. I wonder how many of you just simply checked in with one another this past year? I know a lot of you did. That empathy, that connection rooted in Jesus' words to us, that matters. It matters a lot and it especially mattered this year. I'd love to pick on Gwen again, who called her way through our phone directory. How many times? How many of you got a call from Gwen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the third task of the interim process is understanding leadership and facilitating new leadership. And this is most on our minds as we move into today's annual meeting. All of you are going to be asked to vote on trying a new leadership model that's task-based, a new way of church service and ministry. And wrestling with this has involved leaderships and others in the congregation for well over a year. He counsels presenting this model today in hopes that doing leadership differently in an age of a different way of doing church will give new energy, will enable new things to grow, will keep us aflame and alight, as Paul said, and not burned out trying to fill 60 elected positions. And so this way of new leadership, new way of moving forward is something we explore in this moment in time in the interim process. And we work it out over the next weeks and months ahead. Will there be bumps? Yes. Will we get it wrong sometimes? Oh, yes. <laughs> Will some things fall and we'll have to pick them up? Yes. But I believe deeply that the life and the love of this congregation will blossom through that new way of serving one another and serving how Jesus calls us to go out. So the fourth task, reconnecting to the UCC. So sometimes people ask, what does UCC stand for? Answers include Unitarians Considering Christ. <laughs> sometimes unorganized others. <laughs> or uh, unorthodox oddballs. So I don't know if you can try any of those on and they fit, but the UCC is our home denomination. We are not just First Christian Congregational Church. That was our beginning identity, but we joined the United Church of Christ in 1957 when that denomination started. In fact, my stole today was created at the 50th anniversary of the United Church of Christ, which wasn't that long ago. So we're a very new denomination with very, very old, old roots, as I know as someone living in Plymouth. So United Church of Christ, that means we come together from different backgrounds. Not all of you grew up UCC. In fact, most of you did not grow up UCC. Not all of you even grew up Protestant. In fact, many of you grew up Catholic or Orthodox or some other tradition. We come together and we are united. And we are united about, around Jesus who calls us forth. We are radically democratic, as I was talking with the kids today about. We vote and that's how things are decided. And your vote counts and your vote matters. Just as everyone's vote counts and everyone's vote matters. And so we vote and that's what leads us forward into how we do things and how we strive to find God in the midst of our lives and Jesus leading us forward from this place. And so yes, the United Church of Christ is where we find our roots. And you'll be learning more. I'm gonna lean on our confirmation class in a couple weeks to help teach us about the history of the United Church of Christ, which is pretty fun. And finally, the last task, one we're not there yet, but working on is making a commitment to a new pastor and a new future. Your search team is working. 
They come together, you commission them, they're working away, and they'll be working away together until they find the pastor to call to come here to introduce to you. And again, you will have the chance to vote on that person and then step into a new chapter in the life of this church. And then, thankfully, the consultant in all her chaos goes away and you live into a new life and a new world together. And so God is indeed doing a new thing here. And we are reminded in the midst of that new thing, in the chaos it brings, the changes it brings, the life it brings, the light it brings, to rest in the understanding of our history, to move into new ways of leadership, to think about the ways in which we are called into our community that is ever shifting around us to think about our United Church of Christ denomination that holds us together in covenant, we with them and them with us. And then to move down that way where Jesus always promises to go ahead with us, to walk with us, to call us friends. We are no longer servants, but friends walking with Jesus, our true friend who leads us in ways of ministry and challenge and life everlasting. And so, the state of the church, the state of this church, is mighty fine from my point of view and my privileged view from here. And so let us go into this new church year together with light and love, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit that enlightens us all. Amen. I'd invite all who are willing and able to rise for our next hymn. They will know we are Christians by our love. It is on page 7. Jesus, you call us to be your people, to walk side by side, to support one another, to love one another in the good times and the hard times. We are thankful for the long history of this church, for the many faithful people who brought it to life and sustained it over many years. We are grateful for the leadership 
that is stepping down today and the leadership stepping up today. We are thankful that Jesus, you continue to live in our midst and lead us in the ways of covenant. Promise to God and to one another to let love be our guide, to let love make us whole, to let love see us through and to carry that love out into a world of need and hurt. We're grateful to be gathered today, Jesus, in your midst, and to lift up prayers together. For we know that you hear us when we pray, you are present to our needs, and you unite us as one people. We cast our eyes to the wider world you ask us to care for, Jesus. And we pray for all the families whose loved ones are dying from COVID, still over 2,500 each day. And we think about that ocean of grief and sorrow and loss. And we pray for your presence to be with those who are grieving. We pray for our health workers who are struggling under the weight of caring for folks for so long and not having the help they need. For those who have been burned out and left the profession, for those who are still trying their best to serve in places that are understaffed. Jesus, we ask for your presence that we might still continue to hope to live, to move forward in your light, even in these trying times. We thank you for your grace for us day by day. We ask that you push us to offer those, that grace to those in which we don't see eye to eye, those in which we have conflict, and that that grace might spread even to our nation as we look for looming thoughts of war in Russia and Ukraine. May grace and peace prevail as lives are at risk and war truly only ever brings loss. We pray for our leaders, the leaders of this church, of this community, of our state and of our nation, the leaders in our global world, that they might be open to love, to compassion, to empathy, to doing what would be considered right in your sight. Help us to see what part we can play in healing this, your beloved world. With thanks for your life and grace, for all that you have left for us to do as people of the church, we pray. Amen. to this morning's offering. To offer your money, your tithes, your time, your talents, your prayers. To offer those things to the ministry of this church as we work in this place. To heal the people, this congregation, to heal our community and neighborhood, to look to ways to healing our wider world. And so you are invited. It is
is a gift to be able to give. We'll now collect this morning's offering. Join me in the prayer of thanksgiving printed in your bulletin. Generous God, over and over your grace sustains us. Over and over your love provides for us. Over and over your arm steadies us. We give you these gifts with gratitude and joy. Thankful that you are God over all. It always seems important to me to have communion on an annual meeting Sunday. For it is the ultimate connecting of us one to another at Jesus' table. To take the fruit and the bread, to come together and remember our promises, and remember Jesus saying to, you, saying to us all, I have loved you as God has loved me. Live into that love. Live in the place of that love. And as long as we keep those commandments, we do live in the space of God's love. And so I invite you to the table this morning. This is not my table, this is not this church's or denomination's table, but this is Jesus' table set and prepared for all of us. It is open to all of us to come, to take the bread and the cup, and to feel renewed, refreshed, and ready to go out together to serve the world in need. So there's a place for you. And so, come all of you, know that you are invited, lovely invited by Jesus, who invites all of us to this table of life. Let us sing together the first breath, first of one bread, one body. It is on page nine.
that we can lay down all of our burdens. We can lay down those ways in which we have not followed Christ. We can lay down those things that we wish we had done and those things we wish we had. We can lay them down and they are forgiven and they are gone and we are renewed and received. And so let us take a time for this time of confession. Jesus, we know that you love us as God has created us and you understand our deepest needs, our deepest failings, our deepest failures. And you welcome us back again and again and again. So hear us in this time of silent confession as we offer our hearts to you.
Jesus took the cup, offered thanks to God, and blessed it. And he said, take all of you, drink of this. This is the cup of blessing poured out for you and for all generations. Do this in remembrance of me.